I am not to defend myself. Who perished to defend himself? Certainly this meeting is very welcome. I think it's a good meeting. It's an unusual meeting. That a journalist presents a hypothesis without facts, and here come the scientists and give him all the scientific facts. I think we're going to have uh, a real debate today. I think it's going to be a worthwhile debate. I don't think it's between Kaprowski and myself. I think it's uh, about something far more important than that. From the opening of the conference, arguments were launched against Hooper's theory. Even the date when AIDS emerged among men was challenged. But the final blow to Hooper was a surprise announcement that samples of Kaprowski's vaccine had been located and tested and contained no trace of HIV, SIV, or chimp DNA. That left little room for Hooper to respond. This did offend Ed Hooper, because he was clearly the underdog at the meeting. But science is a very cruel culture. We go by evidence. And although we may be fooled in our interpretation, we may fool ourselves in misinterpreting evidence, in the end, hard evidence wins the day. But the scientific evidence that signaled the death knell for the polio vaccine theory needed to be re-examined. Exactly what was tested? The actual samples that were used in the Congo between late 1957 and the beginning of 1960, of course, don't exist anymore. They were used. But one of the samples tested was the very same lot of virus as Hooper thinks is by far the most likely to have been contaminated that was used in the Congo, the CHAT 10A11. Similar samples? Maybe. But the real question is, was it or was it not used in the Congo? This was discovered here in the UK, who had received it in 1981 from the State Serum Institute in Stockholm, who in turn had received it from the Wistar Institute around the time it was made. And it was sealed and had never been opened. So the sample remained sealed since it was made at Kaprowski's laboratory. All one can say for certain is that it was never used in the Congo. Is this enough scientific rigor to use as a decisive statement against the polio vaccine theory? This was another event in which the scientist eventually conjoined and had a public lynching in London for the Royal Society in which they once again claimed to have laid rest to the idea that HIV could have come from polio vaccine. And I don't think they did a better job than they had done before. There are still great gaping holes in their story. We wanted to see for ourselves if SIV carrying chimpanzees were used just for testing or if their organs were used to make Kaprowski's vaccine. So we returned to the Congo, where it all took place. This is Stanleyville, Belgian Congo's former capital. On the outskirts of town lie the remains of the vast Stanleyville Medical Laboratory. In 1957, it was a sparkling new facility where Kaprowski set up his operations to produce and test his polio vaccine on the local people. Camp Lindy, which housed the chimpanzees, was built on a peninsula of the Lindy River, 40 minutes upstream from Stanleyville. To get there, we had to take the road and then a ferry to cross the river. During his research, Edward Hooper had found Christoph Bayello, one of the assistants working at Camp Lindy. Bayello agreed to guide us there. In the 1950s, he was in charge of caring for and feeding the chimpanzees. What secret is Bayelo talking about? In the jungle, only a few traces remain, but other images bring these abandoned sites back to life. These photographs were taken by Tom Norton, Kaprowski's right-hand man. 
The photos help date one of Kaprowski's trips to the Congo, February 1957. It corresponds to an event, the first big influx of chimpanzees to Camp Lindy. More than 100 chimpanzees, an exorbitant number, captured in about 15 days. An important visit, it's immortalized with a symbolic handshake between the two co-founders, Ghislain Courtois and Hilary Kaprowski. In this photo are the 11 camp assistants, including Christophe Baiello and Joseph Limbaya, one of two nurses who observed firsthand what was taking place at Lindy. According to Joseph, Paul Osteriff, the lab's head of virology, was in charge of killing the chimpanzees. Joseph describes what he did, Bayelo what he witnessed. Their two accounts reveal that the Lindy staff systematically harvested organs from the camp's chimps. So that's how it was, like this day in Lindy, filmed by a team member. What Joseph and Bayelo revealed was that some animals were dissected alive. And the main reason in those days for harvesting living organs was to make tissue cultures needed to make the polio vaccine. Jacques Kenyama and Philippe Elibé both worked in the Department of Virology with Paul Osterreth. Au département de la virologie, on fabriquait des vaccins parce que après la fabrication, on met dans les des flacons de 50 millilitres et on met des étiquettes aussi. Ce n'était pas une chose à cassette. Il y avait des étiquettes et on avait écrit aussi le vaccin anti-polio. C'est un vaccin qui a malade. Mais ce qui est de près, c'est que les coquilles sont faxées à poliomélite. Il y a un ami. 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 Paul 
Paul Osterith refused to speak with us, but he was categorical in his public denial before the Royal Society when he stated, it never would have occurred to me to risk human life and my own reputation on material prepared under such primitive conditions. I categorically deny that I ever did that. Gaston Inan was also at Camp Lindy. He was a microbiologist who took part in the vaccination campaigns in other parts of Africa. Edward Hooper first interviewed him in November 1992 and recorded the conversation. It was the virus was cultivated on kidney cells, chimpanzee kidney cells. At this time, the tissue culture was made in bottle like this. Yes. 